Hi, John. Welcome back to Movie Junk. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Doing good, doing good. I'm extremely honored and humbled to welcome back veteran actor John Ashton back to our show. John brings in nearly 60 years of film and television artistry. Fans have seen John's films, you know, things, movies like Beverly Hills Cop 1, Beverly Hills Cop 2, starring alongside Eddie Murphy and Judge Reinhold, Midnight Run, one of my all-time favorites, Little Big League, and so many more exciting projects. Um, John, I can't thank you enough. Thank you. Hey, it's my pleasure. It's it's glad to be back uh, after the strike and and get things rolling again. So it's it's good to be back. Amazing, amazing. And it's been almost three years now, believe it or not, uh, since the last time we had our uh, interview. Uh, we really? we in touch, obviously, but yeah, excited to uh, to welcome you back. And you know, it's it's kind of a unique scenario now, right? We were talking about a potential sequel for Beverly Hills Cop um, 3 at the time, which was 4, and um, you know, we're excited to uh, get a release sometime next year. Uh, yeah, we uh, still, they're still doing some post-production on it and stuff, and I think the strike kind of, you know, delayed things a little bit, but uh, I believe it's going to come out in the spring, I believe, but, uh, you know, I don't know any more than you do. Uh, they'll call me and let me know. <laughs> right, but I, believe, I believe it's going to come out in the spring. Amazing, amazing, and we're we're excited, right? I mean, the the first Beverly Hills Cop movie came out in 1984, and if I'm not yeah. mistaken, this was the highest grossing film by when this. So this movie was so hot when it came out. Number one that year, actually. And number one, number, number one R-rated movie for for a long time. So, and then I think it was Matrix. I think kind of took over like in 2003, but at the time it was number one. And right now you're we're coming back to this, um, you know, character 39 years later. I mean, what was it like shooting that first scene? It was, you know, it was it was very it was weird because it was like we never left. You know, we got on the set the first day and it was like, hey man, how you doing? Good man, how you doing? Let's go to work. And it was just like we never left. And uh, it was great, you know, and uh, we've got everybody, everybody's back and uh, we got some good guest guest actors in it. And uh, uh, it, it was just uh, like I said, it was like we, we you know, never <laughs> left, you know, it was uh, it was weird. It was weird. Uh, good weird. You know what I mean? Now, now cor correct me if I'm wrong, if I, if I remember from our last interview, right, when you were initially auditioning for this role, right? There was a line of actors and they sort of paired individuals together when they were trying to find the partners, right? Yours and the Judge Reinhold character. And you guys just happened to have been paired together, right? It wasn't like a planned thing. No. Right, it was total accident. They total had, accident. Uh, there must have been, I don't know, 20 or 30 actors in the hallway and and they came out and just kind of went, you, 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 and. Just by chance, they put Judge and I together, you know, and and uh, you know he came over to me and and I, you know, I had auditioned for it a couple of times when when Stallone was going to do it at one time and and I only read one scene the whole time that uh, the scene where I punch him in the stomach and and say we don't want a smart mouth guy like you from out of town and uh, that was the only scene I ever read. I never read the script. And uh, so Judge, you know, came over and said, hey, we're going to read together. Uh, what do you think of the script? And I said, I don't know. I never read the script. <laughs> so he went, oh, my God. So I said, oh, we'll just wing it. And we winged it. And they loved their chemistry. And we got the job. So it was it was pretty special. And, and a lot of that raw, natural comedy that we got, obviously, with, with your characters, right? There was a lot of, um, you know, ad-libbing, so imp improv, right? With, with some of your guys, uh, or, or no? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Marty Brest, the director, who I love, Marty, I, and I work with him on Midnight Run also. Yeah. Uh, Marty just gave us free reign to run with it because in the original script, and the original script was a pretty heavy script, uh, you know, it's, it's the same plot line, the, uh, him going to L.A. to, to revenge the, the, you know, the killing of his his, his uh, buddy, you know, in Detroit, and he goes to L.A. I mean, the, that basic plot was the same, but it was very heavy, and Mickey Rourke at one time was going to do it. 
Yeah. And but then when they got Eddie, it changed to a comedy, but the script really never changed. So we just had to start ad living stuff and and Marty loved judging my chemistry together and he just gave us free reign to run with it. So uh the, the we do developed those characters as we were filming. So uh it was basically uh, you know, a lot of it was ad lib. So the movie initially was supposed to be a lot darker and some more of that comedy approach came in because of your guys' chemistry? Well, and because of Eddie, obviously. But uh, yeah, it, uh, Mickey Rourke was going to do it and then Stallone was going to do it and it was going to be a big, you know, Rambo blows up Beverly Hills or something, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. then he, he left and then uh, all of a sudden they got Eddie and it switched to a comedy, but the script never switch and never changed so eddie and and I, we just started ad living stuff and made made a comedy out of it you know so uh but you know when you really look at it i mean my character is fairly fairly serious in it all the time you know and judge is kind of the you know the off kilter guy and i'm kind of you know and it was actually uh, in the audition uh when i said we were winging it you know i i I said to the guy that was reading for the captain who wasn't Ronnie Cox, it was another actor. And I, you know, I said, can you give me a minute? And I looked at judge and I said, give me a minute with the captain. And judge kind of looked at me like, well, okay. You know? And, and I said, uh, can I get a new partner? Cause this guy's a real pain in the ass. And, <laughs> and the whole room laughed, you know, and then, uh, you know, we got the job obviously, but they actually, a couple of months into shooting, they actually wrote that scene into the script. And then we were getting ready to shoot it. And Marty came over to me and, and he said, do you really want to shoot this scene? And I said, why? And he said, I love the fact that you're kind of the harried husband and you just keep putting up with him. And he, I'm afraid you're going to look like a bad guy if you ask for a new partner. And, and I said, let's not shoot it. So we never shot it. And I'm glad, you know. Yeah. And, and your character starts, you know, warming up, obviously, right, as the movie goes on and, and you're also into the second movie as well. Um, but what, what's amazing, too, is, you know, this was 39 years, almost 40 years ago. Right. So Eddie was only 23 at the time. Right. And he mm -hmm. just you know, does such a great job you know, in this film. You would have never known that he was 23 years old. But, you know, now, you know, so now he's, you know, 63 and, and kind of doing these scenes. And even with you guys. Right. Because these movies, you know, you, you're climbing walls. You're dodging bullets. You know, you're doing, you know, you're climbing on the floor, right? Trying to get from one place to another. I mean, right. how were you guys able to do this in, in this film <laughs> now, 40 years later? How, what was that like? It was it was rough. It was rough. <laughs> I mean, you know, we, <clears throat> we had, excuse me, we had shootouts that we had to be diving undercover and stuff. So, you know, luckily we had some crew guys there that would help us up. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it was... There's a little bit of action. Well, there's a lot of action actually, but uh, um, I I don't want to give too much of the plot away. But uh, I, about two months ago, before the strike happened, um, I had to go and do some ADR on it, which is doing voiceovers, because there was a scene with a helicopter in front of the Beverly Hills Cop Police Department. And uh, so there's a lot of noise and stuff. So I had to redo the, the voice stuff. So I got to see a little bit of the film and it looks fantastic. It looks, it looks great. I, I think the audience is going to be really pleased. It's uh, we got back to the eighties. Well, we got back to, to where it was supposed to be, you know. Amazing. So. Amazing. And, you know, Jerry Bruckheimer is attached to this film and you yep. know, recently, you know, uh, made the Top Gun sequel. It was a few years ago, but man, such an amazing job. Like we, we got all that nostalgia feeling back. And, you know, when I saw Top Gun 2 and saw that he was going to be attached again to the Beverly Hills Cop 4 movie, I was like, man, if, if this is anywhere as close to this with his imprint on there, this is going to be amazing. And I'm not just saying this because I have you um, and we had this interview and obviously I love your performance. But when I saw that you were also coming back, I knew we were going back to the roots. I knew that this movie was going to be awesome. Yeah, uh, well, I, you know, I didn't do three and uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of reasons I didn't. But uh, number one was Jerry wasn't involved with three. And it just, 
it just wasn't the same. And uh, when Jerry got attached to four, I said, I'm in, man. And uh, I got the script and I loved the script and Jerry was involved and I love Jerry. I get along great with him. And, and uh, I said, I'm in, man, you know, so, uh, and I'm glad because it's going to be, it's going to be huge. <laughs> Amazing, amazing. And we have some new additions uh, joining the cast, you know, and Kevin Bacon. We also have um, Joseph Gordon uh, Levitt's also joining as well, too. But we're also getting the return of Serge or Serge, you know, Bronson Pritchard, Paul mm -hmm. Reiser's coming back as well, too. So uh, I'm, I'm just excited. You know, what's what's Serge doing nowadays? Right. I mean, he's got to be a, a, an, an art mogul by now. Right. So I'm excited to see him return as well. Yeah, well, I'm not going to give it away, but uh, um, yeah, he's yeah, it's cool, man. Everybody, everybody's right back to where they should be, you know. Uh, uh, I, you know, I just think the audience is going to really dig it. And uh, I don't know, Harold Faltermeyer is doing the music, so we got back to that. So uh, I'm I'm excited to see it. <laughs> I really am. I mean, just what I saw of it doing the ADR stuff, I loved. It looks great. And Mark Malloy, the director, did a great job from, from what I saw. And uh, uh, it's evidently screening. Uh, Netflix is doing some screenings of it, and they're going through the roof. So uh, as of now, it's uh, it's gonna be gonna be huge. Definitely, definitely. And um, this is just kind of more of a, of a fan question, right? And I know you mentioned that when you guys returned to the set, it was like you guys never left. But um, what was it like, obviously, um, you know, coming back with, with Judge Reinhold again? And what were, what were some uh, conversations that you guys had, you know, coming back on the first day? Well, you know, Judge and I, you know, we've got all of us have kind of kept in touch a little bit, you know, and, and Judge and I probably more than than any of us. Uh, only because we've done some autograph sessions and they always went Taggart and Rosewood together. So we've done some comic cons over in England uh, in Germany and uh, London and Scotland. And so, you know, judge and I keep in touch pretty much doing, doing autograph shows and stuff like that. So uh, it, it was fun just to get back into character again. And, and, uh, and, and, uh, and it, it, being back with Eddie, you know, Eddie's always, he's always there and you got to be on top of your game too, you know? So um, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. And just from, you know, um, we've been starting to see more publicity for Beverly Hills Cop 4, and we've been seeing some more promotional photos of Axel Foley, Eddie Murphy. Um, from the, the basic plot synopsis that we're seeing so far is, you know, we do see that Axel's daughter, um, you know, is, is a central character. She's in Beverly Hills and she's investigating potentially the corrupt police department within Beverly Hills. And she's a DA. And then this is what sort of spurs Axel to kind of come back to Beverly Hills. Is that what's available to the public or is there anything else that you're allowed to share? And no worries if you yeah. can't. Yeah, Eddie's daughter is a defense attorney in Beverly Hills and uh, she's defending a, a cop killer. And uh, and that's what brings Eddie back to L.A. to investigate, you know, not investigate, but to see what, what's up with his daughter and the police department. And he gets there with me and judge. And, so, uh, and then Brian and uh, Kevin, Kevin's uh, one of the police department. He's in the uh, Beverly Hills cop policeman now. And uh, so is Joseph Gordon-Levitt and uh so that's what brings him back to L.A. is his daughters and, you know, defending a guy that killed a, a L.A. A Beverly Hills cop. So and that's that's as much as I can say. right now. No, definitely. Definitely. And and John, also, too, I mean, you're you're an acting vet, right? I mean, you've been in the industry for so many years, but I believe this character Taggart now, you know, the third time it's it's is the, is this the the most that you've played a specific character have you have you for example like coming back 40 years later sort of what i'm trying to allude to is coming yeah. back 40 years later like do you have to approach it as a completely different character or because you've played him before um it's easier for you to kind of snap back into it like what do you how does it feel kind of coming back into that role 
Well, you know, I mean, I, it's kind of comfortable. It's a comfortable character for me, you know, so I just fell right back into it, you know. Um, uh, you know, I mean, I did stage for many, many years before I got into film and television and and, and stuff. And uh, I mean, I did a play for nine months and you're doing the same character every night for nine months. So you you get used to recreating your character pretty, pretty quickly. So. Perfect. Perfect. Well, I want to definitely save some more cop questions more once the, the film releases. I do yeah. want to also jump into um, another one of my all time favorites that you star in in Midnight Run. I know we were talking about some potential script ideas and there was even some ideas of floating around around a Midnight Run 2. Um, but we did lose the Duke since the last time um, we had our interview right. session. Have there been any talks picked up since then or nothing? No, not that I, a couple of years ago, there was a script out and I read it and it wasn't that great. Uh, so I haven't heard any other thing about that. I happened to be in in, Bear, in LA at the time. And they wanted me to go to a, a script reading with De Niro and stuff the next day. And I was flying out the next day and I read the script and I wasn't that happy about it. And I said, I'm flying out. So I left and, and Bobby said, don't worry about it. And so, I mean, it never got done and I haven't heard anything more about it. So um, that that's about it. So, so there was an actual script. Like it was, it was, it was, it was we lost, uh, you know, Chuck Groden. So, uh, but Anyway, definitely. Yeah, I know. And a lot of movies that are out this year, All Happy Families is out and Lonesome Soldier is out. So Lonesome Soldier is playing in some theaters, but I don't know what. And uh, All Happy Families is is we're doing the film festival circuit. So hopefully that'll come out uh, in um, streaming and stuff, too. So so those two are already out. And then, you know, cops coming out in the spring. So. Yep, I, I do want to jump into some of your upcoming projects. And if fans haven't seen, you know, uh, Once Upon a River, I know it's a few years ago this came out, but I really enjoyed uh, this movie. We do see a different side of your, um, you know, performance. It's a role that we're not really used to seeing you in. Um, I know. Gave me, gave me a little bit of uh, tears as well, too. It was very sad, but it was a very deep. Uh, it was a very um, good movie to watch as well, too. I really enjoyed it. Um, good soundtrack uh, as well too. Um, I really yeah. enjoyed the film. That was oh, that was excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I love doing it. I I read the script and and I said I got to do this character. You know, I'm a character actor. I mean, like I said, you know, I got I got my degree in theater and I did theater in Europe and you know in England and Scotland and uh, way before I ever started getting into films and stuff. Uh, uh, I got my degree in theater from USC and. Uh, you know, I, you know, I did the festival theater tour in, in Germany and, uh, you know, I, I, and when I read that script, it was like a play, reading a play to me, you know, and, and I've done a lot of different characters on stage and I, you know, that's, a, that's another reason I wanted to do Midnight Run because it was so different than Taggart, you know, and, and of course, you know, Smoke is even different than both of those guys. So, you know, I like to try to do different different things because I'm a character actor and I like to play different characters. All Happy Families is by the same director of Once Upon a River, by the way. Uh, Harula. Harula Rose directed it, yeah. So awesome. it, it's, it's uh, 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 Josh Radner and Rob Hubble and it's called All Happy Families and it's about a dysfunctional family. And uh, she called me and wanted me to play the father and I said, absolutely, and we shot that in Chicago and uh, Lonesome Soldier. I play a, a grandfather who's a Vietnam vet whose grandson comes back from Iraq with PTSD and I try to help him through it. And uh, we shot that in New Mexico. So last year I went from New Mexico to Chicago and right to LA to do Cop 4. So it was a pretty busy year last year. So, But those two films, are, are I'm proud of those two films too. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, and we, I definitely want to actually, um, we, were, we were actually supposed to set up some time with Harula uh, during the Once Upon a River um, time to, to discuss that film. So definitely want to reach back out to her to discuss uh, her latest project and uh, excited that, you know, you've been, you know, keeping busy. Um, also to, you know, it sounds like um, 
you know, between the end of this year and next year, a lot of exciting uh, projects that are coming out um, your way as well. Um, I did have a, a fan question because you mentioned you also studied at USC. Mm -hmm. USC. Right. Um, is it true that you were in school at the same time as John Ritter? Were you guys classmates? Or is that just yes, we were class? We did a couple of plays together at USC, actually. So, yeah, wow. we were classmates. Well, what was that like? He's a funny dude, man. He was a funny dude. A very, very creative guy. It was a lot of fun. So, yeah, so it's, it's unfortunate that he he left us way too early, but, you know. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I mean, obviously from, from Three's Companies and um, another movie that I really loved uh, from his performance um, that doesn't really get mentioned as much is Stay Tuned. I think it came out of like 92. It was a comedy movie that he made. Uh, where he gets oh, yeah. into his TV. I mean, that movie always resonates uh, with me and <laughs> and John Ritter. But yeah, we we lost him way too soon. And um, you know, his son has become quite a big, um, you know, yeah. established actor as well too. So um, actually, I I went to uh, a small college in Ohio first, and I played football there. Uh, and then my sophomore year, I and I was studying theater too at the time, and I was on the football team. And then I got a job doing summer stock in Cape Cod. And I was like 20 years old and I was, I was married and had a four month old baby. And I'm doing summer stock in Cape Cod in 1968. And I was making $25 a week at room and board. <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden I just, I kind of went, you know, I could be the greatest actor in the world, but who the hell is going to know it in the middle of Ohio, you know? And, so I applied to USC and I got accepted and uh, I was broke and I got a hold of them and I said, look, I'd love to come, but I don't have any money. Can you wait a year? And they said, OK. So I waited a year and went to Chicago and worked on the freight docks for a year and saved enough money to get to L.A. And, you know, one thing led to another. And here I am. <laughs> And, and how how fortunate we are, you know, as fans, right, with, you know, all your exciting projects. And is is there, I mean, you've worked with some of the all-time greats, right, and, and, and still working. Is there still someone that's on your bucket list that you haven't worked with yet that you still want to with? Uh, yeah, you know, I think about that a lot, you know, but I, it's kind of like if it comes along, it comes along, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. And I loved working with, with Anthony Hopkins. You know, we did Instinct together and uh, we were, you know, worked together for 10 weeks and I was over in Paris and I, I, I was there for three months with Gerard Depardieu, who was a big star in France. And uh, De Niro, I've worked with a lot of really good people and uh, I just kind of take it as they come, you know? <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't know. Amazing, amazing. And uh, John, I do want to be respectful of your time. And I do want to, to share with the fans again, you mentioned your upcoming projects. So we know all happy families. You said it is already in theater or is it going to be coming uh, out? It, it, it's doing the festival theater tour right now. It's going to festivals, but it'll come out sooner or later. Get Haru on. She'll tell you. <laughs> yep, definitely. That's going to be my segue to uh, to talk to her and, and discuss uh uh, all happy families, and then Lone I love Soldier. working with her. I love working with her. She's she's terrific. She's so talented. She's so talented. You know, um, you know, can direct. Has an amazing music. voice as well, too. I mean, she's just amazing. Yeah, music and everything. Yeah. And then we she's also got. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. And she's a nice person too. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely. And uh, we also have. Beverly Hills Cop hopefully coming out next year. And I'm assuming, I mean, I know it's being distributed by Netflix, but is there going to be a limited theater release as well? Do we know that yet? Or I don't know that yet. Uh, I don't know that yet. You know, it's it's right now it's Netflix and it's streaming, but mm -hmm. you know, with Jerry involved and him doing Top Gun, you know, I can't believe he's gonna let it just go not go to the theaters. I hope it goes to the theaters myself. Yeah, definitely. I mean, for, for myself, right, because I was really young when Beverly Hills Cop 3 came out. That was the one that I was I was able to see in theaters. And one and two, first time I saw them was uh, on VHS. So for me, 
I want that experience to where I can go in and see a cop movie in theaters. Big screen with popcorn and the whole mm-hmm. deal. You know, that's uh, that's got to be that way. Amazing, yeah. I'd I'd be super, especially with you know um, wanting to contend for awards as well. I think you need to have a limited theater release as well. Which, well, for example, like the movie The Irishman, you know, there was a two week uh, release in order to qualify for award season. So yeah. uh, I'd imagine with you know um, Harold Fultmeyer coming back and obviously with all the the big names attached that they'd want to be in award contention. So I'd be surprised if it wasn't coming out the theaters too. Um, I would be very surprised and I hope it does. So. Amazing. Amazing. John, again, thank you so much for, um, you know, for coming back on our podcast. Um, one, as a, as a fan, you know, you're part of one of my favorite movies of all time and to get to talk. Uh, I never thought I'd be able to talk, you know, an upcoming Beverly Hills Cop uh, movie with you as well. So I'm really excited and excited to see the work that you guys all put in. Thank you very oh, much. Great. And when it when it comes out, we'll talk again. Definitely, definitely. I mean, we'll use that for round three. Thank you so okay. much. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Take care. Yep. You too.